Oh hey everybody, how you doing? This is Paul. I'll make a video today of something I've just been kicking around in my head. And to be honest with you, I'm trying to figure out why it doesn't make sense. In other words, you know, I think it'd be interesting to go, I'm sure they do this, I'm sure I'm not revolutionary or anything, but I'm sure that they go up to people and they, like scientists or astronomer, astronomers, and they say, why couldn't Earth have been Jupiter? Why couldn't have been born a gigantic gas planet and then over a period of time it reduced to a small planet? Why is it that not possible? And then they will calculate that and they'll go through that. And that's kind of like what I'm going to put out to you now. And a lot of you aren't going to like this. My subs, I don't know if you're going to like this or not. But I'm going to spit it out. And it worries me. It worries me. And I'm trying to figure out why this can't happen. In other words, if there's a really good reason why this can't happen... Folks, can you think of a reason why there can't be a Lake Mercedes? Can, can, can you can you give me a reason why it couldn't happen, or why it's it's impossible for it to happen, or more likely not to happen? Because I'm beginning to wonder myself, folks. We've got three major players in this fiasco uh, disagreement between Putin and Zapansky Toothead. We've got three main players on the West, and you all know what they are. We've got England. We've got Germany, who's, which is the head of the snake. In Europe, in all of Europe, there is only one place that is the epicenter, and that is Germany. And, of course, you have the UK, but UK is not part of Europe. People know that if they know the map, because UK is an island. It's not part of Europe, although it's kind of envisioned sometimes, as they certainly try to absorb it. Hang on, folks. I've got to walk by the uh, the uh, owl here, and I don't want to I don't want to scare the owl because I saw that little baby out here. He's right here, so we'll say hello to him. If he's out. Okay, he ducked, he ducked back. Baby, are you home? Huh? Are you out, honey? Come on out. Come on, baby. Come on, honey. Come on out. Are you home? Come on, baby. Come on out. Come on out, baby. Come on. Come on, Mr. Owl. Come on out of there. Come on. I guess he's just content to burrow. And uh, I just took a walk, and I know I've done at least three miles. And I need to do it because... This morning I did about um, a mile. I didn't do a whole lot. So I'm up to about four miles when I get back here. That's yeah, my destination. I've done about four miles. And I'm going to really start pushing myself because I tested my blood pressure at the grocery store on one of those machines. And I came out at 182. And that's when you know it's serious, folks. That's really high, dangerous blood pressure. And um, part of it is just your circumstances of life, you know, and you can't blame anyone else but yourself for it. So that's just something that you have to kind of live with or you have to go on to medication. So I know that if you walk, it does amazing things for you, particularly if you walk for six months and you start doing 10 to 12 miles a day and you watch yourself, you know. And uh, it's hard for me because it's hard. My life is hard. It's not like your life. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. But we'll get back to the story here. 
I just want to see if the owl was out. He was out when I walked up, but I, I didn't want to bother him, so I just walked by him. It's a baby, no doubt. And that uh, lizard thing is right next to him in that other one, so I do like to check on them and see if they're still here because I enjoy coming up and seeing them, but I walked much further today. Um, anyways, I'm trying to figure out why there can't be a lake... Mercedes and I'm going to tell you why as you all know those are the players we've got Russia and we've got the UK United States Canada for what they're worth and um, Germany so Germany UK United States and Canada whatever the Canadians are worth and that's pretty basically it in Europe the head of the snake is Germany they control the EU uh, they're the, the richest country by far so what I'm wondering is this and, and I'm not telling you this will happen I'm only guessing I'm, I'm doing theoretical hypotheticals okay what would happen if a Kinzal a rather potent Kinzal uh, which is hypersonic, so I'm not sure they could stop it. Uh, what would happen if they hit the Mercedes assembly plant in Germany? I'm sure there's a couple. I'm sure it's not just one. Maybe there's a couple. Maybe there's a few. I don't know. I know that it's probably around 28% in general. Maybe it's even 30 to 33% of their economy. And I don't think anyone would argue with me. Uh, even though you're only talking about 30,000 units a year or 40,000 units a year or something like this, these cars are $100,000. Some of them are more than some of them are less, but they're not for shuckers. You know, we're not talking about $28,000 cars. Uh, that's why Germany rises among over its peers in Europe. Now, what if you sent the Kinzhal there? Not you, but what if Putin sent a Kinzhal and what happened was it completely wipes out the operational capacity of that plant. Now, I believe a Kinzhal could do that. I believe one if they were side by side and don't forget these are GPS so they're probably very very accurate so let's say it was a big facility and you put two uh, Putin could probably level the joint and what I'm thinking is if they put six you wouldn't have to put them in a wide pattern um, Putin could simply put those into two main areas and have a redundant strike and if those Kinzals came down with hypersonic force I'm not sure about one I'm not even sure about two but I'm almost certain that three hypersonic missiles would create a lake because it would probably uh, bring up 150 to 200 feet if not more of terrain and in that event you would have a lake it would be a naturally forming lake and uh, it would happen within a night and I keep trying to figure out why that can't happen why can't it why can't this happen and I keep thinking about it and thinking about it and running it through my head as I walk here. If it does, just the Mercedes-Benz plant, forget about Audi or whatever else, Peugeot or whatever. If that was done too, uh, I don't know where Peugeot is made. It's probably Sweden, Saab, if they even have that anymore. I don't know. But if you had Lake Saab or Lake Peugeot and Lake Mercedes and 
Lake Audi. What would happen? Particularly if you went with another country too. So let's say Audi was made in, in Sweden. Or not Audi, but Peugeot or whatever. And you had lakes there. Instead of a functioning car production facility. What would happen? You know what would happen, folks? Number one, this wouldn't be all bad. It would be bad, but it wouldn't be all bad. First of all, they would forget about all of this galactic warming business. You could be sure of that, okay? If you cut the head of the snake off, which would be Germany, uh, and possibly another country's automobile production, these cars are big money. And you have to understand that there are you know, the elbows connected to the arm bone, arm bones connected to the wrist bone, etc., etc. If you took out the car market, if Putin took out the car market, uh, I have no idea how long it would take to uh, retool and reset up a car. Now, look, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. They might have other areas that's just waiting to be tooled, but I doubt it. These are highly specific, highly advanced um, assembly plants that are not making Toyota Corollas or whatever, although they're advanced too, but we're not talking about Ford Pintos anymore or K cars. We're talking about $100,000 class cars. Certainly with Peugeot and if they're even around anymore and all the rest of them, you're still talking about over $50,000 cars on average easily. Uh, because of the the effect it would have on the economy, uh, tire manufacturers would not be able to produce them for the company anymore. So you'd have problems with that. And you'd have problems with everything that it touched. From restaurants to this and that. Uh, places where people bought their stuff every day when they went to work. Things like that. It could be really devastating. And I'm trying to think what the Germans would do about it if they were faced with waking up one morning to Lake Mercedes. Can any of you answer that for me? I mean, I put this out there. I have a small channel, so nobody's probably going to see this anyway. But can you explain to me why that wouldn't be done? Because... If two or three of those manufacturing uh, hubs of these expensive European cars were transformed into lakes, folks, I think it would completely cripple Europe because Germany is the head of the snake. And I mean, other places like Italy would still get their tourism and stuff like that, but I don't know if it's enough to make it to where they could stay as a cohesive union anymore. And frankly, I don't know what Putin is waiting for because the German army, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to do too much storming across the Russian tundra, especially in the winter. I don't think that they would be real excited to do that. They may bomb Russia, but... Uh, the problem is Russia could do a little bit more bombing themselves. So if, if it was presented as a learning lesson, and I know it would be a painful learning lesson, but let's say uh, they did it to, let's say they did it to Sweden, okay? And they just made Lake Saab or Lake Peugeot. Uh, if I were part of a country that was supplying weapons to people that are the enemy of Russia, I think I would start thinking very seriously about whether or not I wanted to have my government uh, participating in this because I would kind of like to have our car manufacturing in Germany or in Sweden or something. So anyways, I put this out there for you. Uh, you might be able to tell me whether or not um, 
the uh, car production is the number one uh, the, the number one money making uh, venture in Germany. It may be tourism, I don't know. But I would think that cars would not be 10%. I think cars would be much more than that. I think they would be much more than that. And when you get done with the everything that it touches, like tires and restaurants and businesses and this and that, and parts stores and everything else like that, uh, I think it could cripple Europe. If it cripples Europe, it would be a mirror image of uh, 1939. It, this, what are they going to do? What would Europe do? Not exactly an exact image, but I, I just don't see uh, droves of German soldiers uh, crossing the Russian tundra. Do you? The cold Russian tundra? I just don't see it happening. And I think if done in combination with the knocking out of their main um, place of government, like for us it's like the White House or whatever, you know, Washington, D.C., but if it was just taken down and turned into a lake, that too, um, Lake Berlin, I mean, folks, I don't know. Am I just crazy? Am I just fantasizing? Or coming up with odd thoughts? You tell me why that wouldn't benefit Russia in the long run. And I'll just entertain your comments if you have any, if you're seeing this. And that's my thoughts on it. Bye.